Welcome to Marketing and Beyond on Daily Ad Brief. I am your host, Jennifer Filzen, and today I have with me Joseph Prince of Wrecking Ball. Wrecking Ball sounds like such a cool name, Joseph. Welcome. Thank you for having me. Tell us a little bit about what you do at Wrecking Ball. So we've been in the digital space since 1996, but over the last two decades, we've morphed into more from a design and advertising model to more of a consultancy. So we take really big ideas that companies have and help them execute where they might not be able to do this internally, you know, strategy, design, the actual software engineering and coding of the platform, um, all the content creation, analytics and data, and then look at how the platform is working, whether it's internal or consumer facing or for data analyzation and help brands solve problems by using technology or tell the stories that they're having a hard time communicating to the end user. That's cool. And I like your brand, right? It, you're not you're not signifying that you're doing this delicately. You're coming in and just wrecking <clears throat> things. That's that's pretty cool. Yeah. So now, it, about some of the changes you've seen in the last couple of years that that brings you to that level of wrecking. Yeah. So the, the name itself was really not about the destruction. It's about the reconstruction, the rebirth, right? So every brand has a, some type of digital property or entity or or platform, but it doesn't mean that it's working anymore, right? So the best we take the best of what's been there all the boardroom fights the late nights the arguments that people had to make something great take the learnings of it and use that as the foundation to build something better knocking everything else down um the question for the last few years what we've seen especially lately even though it's a buzz but it's slowly coming to fruition is everything around web3 web3 whether it's you want to call it for blockchain or DeFi, or be more the immersive experience like meta any any of the metas um, it's the, almost like the Wild West again of the late 90s or early 2000s where nobody knows where this is going to be or what's going to happen with it. But there's such a big sense of FOMO from our clients and brands globally that all of a sudden the last 60 to 90 days, they're even more interested in what is this metaverse thing? How do we get involved? Do we need to be involved? Do we need to have a presence on there? Is it relevant? <clears throat> so a lot of unknowns, but definitely a very exciting time for at least brands that have budgets to explore and see what this comes out to in a year or two or three. Agreed. It is, it is a really interesting time. And I like how you say it's like the wild West, because I agree with you completely. Every generation has its gold rush, doesn't it? And this space within web 3.0 meta and NFTs, is just blowing up. And it's like, where's this going? You see the possibilities but how, how do you get a read on it? How do you how do you zero in on what the next steps are for each client? We think it's a lot of experimentation, really. Almost going back to the early days when you had banner ads. You know, placing a banner ad with somebody click on it is there ROI on this? The same with any of let's strictly strict stick strictly with metaverse, whether it's Roblox or. Um, Sandbox or any of the other few, the central land, wherever you can claim stake of land. And that's where we're seeing the interest of brands are how do we be involved? And there's a great article I was reading this morning about Chipotle and their land that they've acquired inside of Roblox with kids. And you can be um, involved in, your, go into a Chipotle, see the Chipotle from different years, get the whole history of it, make the food. There's a burrito maker game. And then you earn coins for Roblox uh, as you're working in Chipotle. So ROI, nobody knows, but at least it's brand awareness, it's targeting a young generation that probably East Chipotle now, but is not old enough to work there yet, um, give some history, and it's really just for, for visibility as far as we're seeing. Um, other clients we've talked with or spoken about, um, just popping up virtual stores, whether they make money or not is irrelevant right now, is the feeling, but more so just to have a presence so people are aware that this brand is is here in this space, almost like Second Life, right? It's it's literally Second Life all over again, um, but at an expanded degree where you have digital additional DeFi that's driving the currency, um, the ability for people to make their own products or goods to be integrated with this, and really customizing your avatar even further. So I think Second Life paved the way in the early 2000s, but here we are with seeing it all come to fruition on so many different levels. That is amazing. Oh my gosh. Uh, we got a few seconds left. Do you have any words of wisdom or advice for any clients that want to get into this space? Prepare some budget just to explore. Um, it doesn't mean it will work or not, but at least you'll have some knowledge 
and some data of what may have worked and what didn't work. Awesome. Joseph Prince of Wrecking Ball, thank you so very much. We've run out of time, but everybody, if you want to find out more about him and his awesome business, please do look it up on Daily Ad Brief. And uh, I hope you all have a wonderful day. And remember this, if you're not building community around your brand, you are just a commodity. Have a great day. Bye. Simplify presents addressable CTV, combining the power of TV with the targeting and attribution of digital. Simplify's addressable CTV delivers massive reach with the ability to scale without sacrificing precision. TV buyers can generate incremental reach with household level targeting, frequency controls, reporting, and insights. To learn more about Simplify's addressable CTV and what it can do for your clients, visit simply.fi.